Hey, everybody. Welcome to the 6 by Live webcast podcast conversation. We have a breaking story today. And, you know, Pat and I don't always jump on live to talk about every piece of news that breaks. We do our weekly show where we cover the big topics, big events. But every once in a while, there's a bigger than a normal event. Sometimes it's an acquisition or a merger announcement. Sometimes it's a big tech launch. And in this case today, um, Intel had exactly that. It had its big, uh, long-awaited pat, um, Ice Lake launch. We're going to talk about that. But first and foremost, um, you and I have been uh, heads down all day, and I'm sure the world is dying to know, how are you doing and how is Ernie, your cool yeah. little pug? Yeah, so who is Ernie? So I've got uh, three older kids. My youngest is 18, and uh, my wife and I have fallen in love with two French bulldogs, Ernie and Pearl. Ernie had surgery uh, on Friday and uh, uh, back surgery. And the good news is, is he, first of all, he survived, which is, is hard to do when you're a dog. Uh, it was a six hour surgery on his back. Uh, he's walking, sorry, he's standing, not walking yet, but just the fact that he has feelings in his toes is a plus. And we are literally rehabilitating him. And, and right after this podcast, I'm going home. We, we bought two little baby uh, cribs uh, uh, to, to keep him in. So my kids might be uh, out of the house, but uh, I have a little baby again. Hey, listen, um, I know everybody comes in, you know, our community, all the people that listen to 6.5 and our podcast and read our, our commentaries on different channels probably want to hear about our tech, not our lives. But hey, it's part of the deal. When you uh, track a cast, you got to get to know the people a little bit. So everyone out there, uh, say a little prayer for Pat's dog, Ernie. Uh, he's a really good kid. Uh, so could definitely use it. And Pat, I'm glad to hear he's okay. But let's get to Intel. So, you know, there's been a lot of Intel news lately. I feel like it's been kind of heavily slanted that way. A lot of media coverage. You and I have been very busy with press media uh, in our own analysis about Intel. But, you know, that's just sometimes how the cycle goes. It's it's news intensive. A few weeks ago, Pat Gelsinger rolled out IDM2, new foundry business, uh, new fabs. But this was a big, long awaited thing, Pat. In 2019, late 2019, uh, Intel was supposed to be coming out with its new 10 nanometer plus, uh, 10, uh, sorry, 10 nanometer plus process Ice Lake that was going to be, uh, bring it to the next level of competition that got delayed and almost for uh, over a full year, delays, right. delays, delays. And that was something that really, um, caused the company ire, caused investors ire. Um, but finally today, April 6th, 2021, Naveen Chinoy, uh, EVP of, uh, Intel came out, kicked off solving for X, which was essentially all about the third generation Xeon processor, Pat. So the, the hump has been crossed and Intel has now launched this third generation product. Yeah, it was uh, it was a big day for Intel. And I, I would say it's probably five or six years uh, uh, later than they had expected. Uh, which was a first 10 nanometer uh, pro uh, process node. Now, keep in mind that uh, Intel's uh, 10 is like T more like TSMC 7 as it comes to performance and, and scalability. But uh, Daniel, uh, we'll let the tech tech only pubs get into the tech. Uh, let's 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 kind of angle out here. Uh, I think today Intel led with their strengths. And Intel is this massive company. So first off, it has 90% market share in, uh, in data center processors. And the other 10% is split up between uh, mostly AMD, a little bit of IBM, and, and uh, people like AWS who make some of their own processors. So uh, there is a degree of strength, right? Intel is the largest semiconductor maker on the planet. Um, and therefore, you, you would expect them to bring the kitchen sink, which in, in data center terms is, is a solution, a platform approach, leveraging its ecosystem. Daniel, like you mentioned uh, when we were uh, uh, chit-chatting. So instead of just launching a chip, uh, Intel uh, came out with uh, an ecosystem of solutions, uh, which for specific workloads, and they talked about uh, networking, uh, the edge, uh, high performance computing, uh, uh, bringing a processor, third gen uh, Xeon, plus their Ethernet adapters, plus their FPGAs, plus persistent memory and and uh, and uh, NAND uh, uh, storage, 
um, uh, to the table. And, and that is the way that you play the game when you're uh, the big the, the big dog in there. So I thought that was a a very uh, good move. Uh, so I'll I'll just kind of that's my opening uh, it's my opening volley here. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of things that caught my attention. One, there was a big way and uh, focus on flexibility this time around. Um, we all saw during that period of time where things got delayed, the company really migrated from a performance oriented focus on product, knowing that the AMD um, Epic had, had already hit seven nanometer, was a little bit ahead on process. And the, and, the, and the punt went out to this new data centric strategy saying, we're not gonna be this focused narrow uh, on this just stream of CPU and competing just on the, on, the, on the data center server. We're gonna compete across this whole data centric strategy. We're gonna add networking, we're gonna add memory, we're gonna add, um, you know, we're gonna go after AI and ML, which has been a bit of a up and down story there. Um, we're going to you know, focus on the edge, the service provider, the operator. By the way, we're going to get into automotive and, and we're going to see our TAM expand to uh, over $300 billion, which was what people could get excited about. Concurrently, uh, the focus was on performance of the business. The business performed pretty well. If you actually go back and look at EPS, despite all the negativity that we were hearing about Intel, the company's performance was actually pretty solid throughout this entire period of time. But that flexibility caught my attention. The company really wants to hit the gambit of being able to serve the cloud, serve the edge, and then serve the enterprise data center. I believe uh, the company was able to tout that all the major cloud providers, Pat, are going to be back on board um, with their third generation processors, um, some significant wins in the operator space, um, and also you know, a, a pretty diverse edge product. The other thing, Pat, was security and AI were top of mind today. Um, you know, the, the SGX, crypto, um, and um, DL Booth were all front and center. Lisa Spellman did a really good yeah. job in her presentation, sort of pointing to some of the specs. Um, now, that's all, all kind of the good thematic stuff that caught my attention. I'll kind of also punt back to you here and say, you know, some of the things that kind of, you know, drew a little bit of my attention to maybe raise a question mark was a lot of the uh, comparisons were done to former generation products. So you would expect big gains and they yeah. got big gains. Um, some of the AI comparisons were based on specific workloads, um, but it's a kind of a careful predicament to make a claim like uh, you're going to be able to do a lot of AI better or in a, in a way that's better than, say, a GPU like in the A100 from NVIDIA. But there were some claims in there. And I think these are things that you're going to see uh, your technology focused journalists, medias, and pubs really digging into over the next several weeks and looking at it and saying, how is this performing? And how does this perform when you get away from their benchmarks and we do our benchmarks? Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, let's let, uh, we're, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing kind of head to head here. Now, with all of this said, to me in workloads that don't require any optimization, I still think AMD will carry the day. But uh, what I think that Intel did so well that I didn't think they did very well in the second generation launch is, is, is uh, you know, and, and you and I got the chance to talk with Lisa Spellman uh, late late last week is is really educating people on many reasons people buy Intel. Um, if the market bought just the highest performance processor, AMD would probably have 50% market share right now. They don't. They have uh, they have ten percent market share. People buy Intel for a lot of reasons: uh, for platform features, um, for its AI capabilities, for its solutions approach that it can bring with things like select uh, select solutions. Um, through co-engineering, hey, co-marketing too, right? I mean, uh, Intel spends over a billion dollars a year in marketing, and and the marketing machine is is just going. I think I thought Intel did a good job on that. Bouncing back to machine learning, I wish there would always be the caveat. I didn't like that Intel said the only data center processor that has AI. That is that is not true. In fact, uh, AWS's Graviton 2 has machine learning acceleration uh, on inference side. They don't have training, but they have uh, uh, inference side. I really like what they're doing on the built-in crypto. Uh, I liked it when IBM did it on their, their mainframes, and I like it. Uh, that they're doing it 
uh, on um, on their data center processors. Uh, if nothing else, uh, if you choose so, uh, you can have encryption always on without the need for a PCI uh, card to do the acceleration. So uh, they they you know once again uh, Intel leading with their strengths and I think really grinding in there uh, that that performance uh, isn't everything. And and by the way, this isn't to say that 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 I think that third gen Xeon is a poor performer. Uh, I think it's a good uh, performer. Uh, particularly when there are software optimizations that are required that Intel and its partners uh, uh, did. So um, uh, net net Intel did a much better job on third gen competitively than they did on, on second gen. I wouldn't say they were ignoring the competition in second gen. I think, I think they gave the competition uh, AMD, uh, a good amount, but not too much focus where it looks like they were getting uh, defensive here. But as you and I both know, because we've got pre-briefed with mountains of slides, there were a lot of competitive stuff in there. And and I like the extent that they went to 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 point out that, hey guys, you know, spec it, don't just look at spec it or spec FP when you're trying to uh, talk about true uh, workloads in the data center or or on the edge. Yeah, I've been pretty notorious over the last couple of years as I've been trying to discern uh, Intel's continued strength and market share versus the perception of a weaker Intel and a stronger AMD and why Intel's been so successful at keeping so much market share. And you brought some great points out there. Look, this company is brilliant at marketing and understands the co-design and ecosystem plays as well as any company on the planet. Also, Data center uh, chip migration is not as simple as like a notebook. It's just not as simple when you need a few new SKUs, you know, you could add some. So you saw a lot of the OEMs in the notebook space adding more variants using Ryzen and AMD. Um, for an enterprise that's been built on Intel, multiple generations of Xeon, uh, and especially as it scaled out to memory, as it scaled out to networking and security, just dropping a new chip from a competitor in isn't that easy to do. And so enterprises are very committed. Uh, the partnerships, Pat, with the big hyperscale cloud, um, these companies are gonna offer instances on Intel because if hybrid cloud is, is the way forward, which I think most of us agree, um, connectivity and interconnectivity to their prem is gonna be important. And if Intel has the majority and the volume of the prem, they're gonna wanna carry on consistency uh, in their environments. So, you know, that I know isn't necessarily just Ice Lake driven, Pat, but your assessment there is so important because I think so many people miss the fact that, that performance is everything. Performance is not everything. Um, and Intel isn't lagging per se in performance, but that's not the only thing carrying the day here. That's uh, true. I think one of the challenges uh, for Intel is going to be that Intel gave AMD a long run. I mean, AMD is on their third gen. And, and I would say for the first time, uh, AMD's third gen uh, Epic was their enterprise play, enterprise data center. Uh, gen one was show credibility and they got some cloud business. Gen two was public cloud, like all the way. Uh, and uh, AMD came in with gen three Epic with all the cer all the certifications you would expect, right? VMware, Oracle, uh, they fixed some issues that uh, they got into databases uh, they, they amped it up. So, I mean, we've got a real uh, competition here. And in the end, competition is good. Look at all the hoops that uh, that Intel is going through that had they no comp, if they had no competition, it wouldn't make a difference. We wouldn't even be debating this. Uh, they probably wouldn't be marketing it as much uh, other than to just move people up. Uh, but but um, anyways, competition is good. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, we're going to see this drive competition, seeing ARM enter the fray drives competition. Intel is back, though, more than ever before. The last few weeks have been very telling under CEO Pat Gelsinger. This would be what I would, um, you know, in kind of a closing remark, and then I'll punt it back to you, Pat, to, to wrap it up. But um, it was a solid launch, addressed a lot of the things that people want to hear. It, Intel played to its strengths. Um, it's got this product in market. It's not sitting so far, um, quote unquote, behind as that perception was even just weeks ago. 
Um, now it's going to be, you know, up to these other companies in the space to keep pushing. When all these companies innovate, though, enterprises win, customers win um, because they're going to get better choice. They're going to get better performance. Um, and, and in the end, like I said, a stronger ecosystem of competitors is good for the market. Uh, an overall good day, Pat. Uh, you know, I'm sure both of us, I'm sure you'll be putting something out on Forbes. I'm going to be writing a research note about this in the coming hours. You can get a little bit more of our in-depth take in the coming days and weeks. But uh, big day overall for Intel. Yeah, good uh, good showing for Intel and uh, led with their strengths, uh, which I think is a good thing. Uh, I, I really see this as a bridge to 2023. Uh, and, you know, I know, you know, I'm just imagining a Foveros, uh design for the data center would be killer. Uh, you could take, you know, AWS could take their IP block, add it to Intel, uh, and have their basically their own custom processor, right? Um, and I, I just think that's super powerful, and I think that's where the industry is headed over over the next uh, ten years. Uh, which, which then, you know, you you'll have a bunch of data center folks wondering if they really do want to create their own uh, processors if they don't necessarily have to. But uh, let's put it in end. Uh, chip uh, chips are strategic. Chips are sexy, and to keep with our chips and SaaS um, theme going here, let's bring this to an end. Uh, you can subscribe to us uh, on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, pretty much everywhere that uh, relevant podcasts uh, sit. And we would love to have you on an ongoing basis. We'll see you all later.